what's up guys we're going to be taking a look at the population analysis auto profit tab from the player pool sheet it's fairly straightforward once you know what the various aspects of the sheet refer to this is basically a tool for notating the population data for a specific player pool now the first thing you might want to do is zoom out slightly we can set this to 75 percent you can see it's probably a little bit more readable this way what we have here is a series of different scenarios. And what we're looking for here in terms of the population data is not the scenario itself, but the scenario our opponents will be facing. So for example, when we have CBET flop, we have a space to input the population data for that scenario. But we're not interested in the population CBET data, we're interested in the population fold to CBET data. We're essentially documenting how profitable each of these situations are for us, how much fold equity we get, and whether we can expect to generate automatic profit as a result. Keep in mind, automatic profit, it's a term that refers to a bluff, which is directly profitable as a result of how often our opponent falls. So as a simple example, the auto profit threshold on a half pot bet is 33%. So if we bet half pot, and our opponent falls more than 33%, it's directly profitable even if we always lose when our opponent continues against that bet. So we're looking for scenarios where the player pool is giving us a decent amount of automatic profit. We can then attack those spots and boost our win rate. So we're looking for fold to CBET flop in that first scenario for the population. When we look at the barrel stat, that's going to refer to CBET turn but we're interested in the population fold to turn CBET. Triple, that's a terminology for the third barrel. We want to know how much our opponent folds to river CBETs. Now, just to make things a bit more specific, and specificity is very important here, especially in terms of position, because we'll find the folding frequencies of the player pool can change quite dramatically, depending on whether they're in position or out of position. Over on the left-hand side, we have this reference AGG in position, which simply means aggressor in position. That's referring to us. We're the aggressor in position here. So to be more specific, we're interested in the population fold to flop CBET while OOP. And for the barrel stat, we're looking for the population check fold versus turn CBET while OOP. And then check fold versus river CBET while OOP. Now, in order to fill in the entire sheet, it can take some time, but you will have a very comprehensive map of how your player pool is playing. You may need to be aware of some of the terminology that's being used. Delayed CBET, this is when we don't CBET the flop, but we fire a delayed CBET on the turn. Follow-up bet. This basically refers to a continuation bet on the river after firing our first bet on the turn. You might think, well, why not just refer to it as a continuation bet or a barrel? We do this because it helps to define the situation more accurately when it has its own specific terminology. Otherwise, everything just becomes a barrel. It's just barrel river after delayed CBET turn or barrel turn after CBET flop. So to make things clearer, we specifically use the term barrel for turn scenarios. We use the term triple for river situations where we fired both flop and turn. And we use the term follow-up specifically for river situations as part of a two-barrel line where we fire turn and river, but not the flop. If we fire the flop, it's referred to as a triple barrel. Stop and go. This is the bet check bet line. This was in common usage quite a number of years ago. Not so many players use it as much, but it's experiencing a recurrence in its usage. More and more players, again, know that stop and go refers to bet check bet. One bet, this is completely made up terminology. It's unclear whether it has any widespread adoption at this stage, but a one bet refers to a situation where the flop gets checked through, turn gets checked through, and we make our first bet on the river. And we've used the made up term river one bet to describe the situation. We'll also need to be aware of float bets and probe bets. A float bet, and this terminology was originally introduced by the creators of Poker Tracker, a float bet is a bet versus missed C bet while in position. So let's tackle one of these slightly more complex stats. Cool check raise flop float turn. So remember, this is the line that we're taking, but the data point we're going to add to the sheet 
is the corresponding population situation they'll be in. So if we're calling a flop check raise, it means that our opponent has check raised the flop. And if we're floating the turn, it means that they didn't barrel the turn after check raising the flop. So our opponent's check raised the flop. He hasn't barreled the turn. He's checked the turn. We've then bet in position versus our opponent's missed turn C bet. And we're interested in how much he's falling to that line. And that's the data point we want to document on the sheet here. We also need to be aware of the term pro bet, which you will find somewhere on this sheet. In fact, notice the spots where we play as the defender are over on the right hand side. So on the left hand side, we have aggressor in position, aggressor out of position, etc. Over on the right hand side, we have defender in position and defender out of position. And you might think, well, why do we have them again? It's because this second section is for three bet pots, then four bet pots. So most important starting point is probably mapping out the single raised pot data. Now, if we have a look at defender in position, we can see the reference here to pro bet turn. So a pro bet is a bet versus missed C bet out of position. So it's very similar to a float bet, apart from a float bet is in position while a pro bet is out of position. So the classic probe turn scenario occurs when our opponent skips their flop C bet in position. So imagine button open raises pre-flop, we cold call in the big blind, we check the flop to the PFR, he checks back instead of C betting the flop. So he skips his in position flop C bet. If we fire the turn, that's then a bet versus missed C bet while out of position. And it's just easier to refer to that as a turn pro bet. So we're interested here, not in the population's probe turn stat, but instead their fold to turn pro bet stat. There's one other aspect of the sheet we need to be familiar with, and that's these colored designators here across the top. Now where it says pop, that just refers to the population averages. So this is gonna be the logical starting point is figuring out the average values for each of these scenarios and filling out this specific column. Now, the other columns refer to various player profiles, and you could make up your own player profile if you want to. These correlate with the player profiles used on the Death Star HUD, which we'll have a look at very shortly because it's going to be part of our population analysis work here. But they are also just the colored tags I assign to players at the table in practice. We'll just run through these very quickly in case you're not familiar with the system. So we have pink tag. Now, this refers to donk where a donk is a very bad player. So with our terminology here, a donk is much worse than a fish. A fish could just be a weak reg, for example, whereas a donk is someone who maybe doesn't even know the rules very well. They're doing a lot of open limping, mid three betting, donk betting. Perhaps they're playing with a broken stack. They're not auto rebuying, etc. Green refers to fish, or you could classify these as a weak reg. Someone who maybe knows a thing or two about the game, but ultimately they're not very good. Their strategy is not very sophisticated. Red refers to a typical reg, usually on the tacky side. So a tight, aggressive reg. Now, just because we're classifying them as a reg does not mean that they're necessarily winning players. And the reason why we can say this is because most players are not winning players. In fact, even most regs are not winning players. It's only a very small percentage of players who actually make money on a consistent basis. So someone does not have to be a winner in order to be part of this specific player profile, the red tag. They could be a fairly okay reg with a marginal loss rate, for example. The cyan tag is a very similar category, but these are on the laggier side. So they do a lot more three betting. They like large three bet sizes. They have a higher V pip on average than the red tag. So using more traditional terminology, this is our lag profile. Orange refers to knit. So this is someone who is playing a six max game and has a V pip of 18 or less. Now, whether you classify that as 18 or less or 20 or less usually depends on the environment. As we move up towards the higher limits, the average reg is usually playing with a slightly higher VPIP than the average reg at lower limits. So what constitutes a knit in lower limit games? You might find a bunch of guys with a VPIP of 18 or lower in a six max game. But if you're playing 500 Nell on stars, for example, you're not going to find very many players with a VPIP of 18. The knits at that limit 
are usually guys with a VPIP of 21 or 22 instead. Finally, we have the blue tag. And this is the tag we use for strong winning players. So these players are always winning over the long run. This is the small percentage of players who are crushing everyone and generating a good win rate. So over on the right hand side, we have the stars 200 now data. We processed it through a range research report using the Death Star HUD. And just so you know, the Death Star HUD is a great choice for using with this sheet. They're designed to be used together. You don't have to use the Death Star HUD. You can use any population analysis tool that you've created and input the relevant data into the sheet. But this particular sheet is designed to work especially well with the Death Star HUD since the stats are going to correlate. We won't have time to fill out the entire sheet. It could take quite a number of hours to do that. It's well worth it. You're going to have much better vision in terms of how the player pool is playing. We're just going to fill out a few rows so we can see what the workflow looks like. So starting with aggressor in position, we know that we're interested in seeing how the player pool plays as the defender out of position. So it's the inverse spot. As long as you can figure out that association, the rest should be straightforward. So if we're the aggressor in position, that means our opponent is going to be the defender out of position. So with the Death Star, we can go straight away to fold to see that out of position pop up. And the data here is going to correlate with the data that we want to input on the report. So first of all, CBET flop, we're interested in the population fold to flop CBET. We can see in this case that it is 43. Fold to turn is 44. And fold to river is 49. Now you'll see that there are three colors that are going to be auto injected into this Excel or G sheets template, depending on the numerical value we insert into the cell. So you can see for values lower than 45, we don't get any colorization. And it's basically saying this is not a great auto profit spot on average, assuming an average bet sizing. And we're assuming an average bet sizing is about two thirds pot, which may not apply to every situation. For example, players using smaller flopsy bets all of the time, for example. So this is just a default you can, of course, tweak the colorization depending on the scenario. So we have lower than 45. That's not really a great auto profit spot. The break even threshold or the auto profit threshold on a two thirds pot size bet is 40%. So although 43% fold equity on the flop is technically automatic profit, it's not a huge amount of automatic profit. And there's a chance there could be another line that's even higher EV, for example, going for a delayed C bet. So just because something is directly profitable, it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be the best option. And that's the kind of category we find ourselves in here with fold to CBET values less than about 45%. Between 45 and 50, we're gonna get this light green color. And the sheet's basically telling us this might be a good spot to attack quite aggressively. It's not very, very profitable auto profit, but it is auto profit and there's a chance that something in this color is going to be the best line. There might be other lines which are also profitable, but once something's in this green category, it's a fairly good contender for being the best line, although it's not a guarantee, but we do know that it's definitely profitable to attack these kind of situations. We then have our third color, which we're gonna see next when we have a look at the delayed CBET category. So we're interested in the population fold to delayed CBET, You'll see the value here, 56%. By the way, notice we're just entering in these values as we go down. This is what we mean in terms of it's designed to be used with the Death Star because we're talking a lot here, but we could actually just enter these numbers in. So we've got versus river follow-up, 51. Versus stop and go, we have 53. Versus river one bet, we have 69. So you can see it takes a lot of the effort out of finding the appropriate population data point and then entering it into the sheet. So you can see what the correlation is here between these two products that we're making use of. Now returning to the colorization, we can see that anything above 50, in fact, it might be 50 and above, let's test that. So 50 also gives us that vivid green color. Anything in this category is significantly profitable in terms of automatic profit. 
And once something ends up in the vivid green category, and this is what we're really looking for when we do this kind of analysis, anything in this vivid green category is going to be so profitable that it's unlikely that an alternate line is going to generate a higher expected value. So for example, when we see delayed CVETs are getting folds 56% of the time, well, the alternate line might be to check back and go for a river one bet. But because this is so profitable directly, it starts to become less and less likely that an alternate line is going to generate a higher expectation. If we take something at the other end of the spectrum, for example, flop CBET, populations only falling 43% of the time, there's a fairly good chance if we have a trash hand that there's going to be a better line than CBETing the flop directly. Probably a good idea to go for a delayed CBET with our trash hands rather than CBETing the flop with trash. Now, of course, it could depend on other things such as the board texture. We might find that on certain board textures, it is incentivized to go for a direct CBET, even if we have a trash hand. And it's okay to actually reuse these columns. If you want to rebrand these columns as different flop textures, for example. So if we go to the texture section of the population analysis report, we could check out something like ace high textures. And we could input the data for an ace high texture in this column. We could input the data for king high texture in this column. That will help us to understand how we should be adjusting our play on different board textures. So we can reappropriate these columns to refer to anything we want so we can compare the data side by side. Now we can see that by default, these refer to the different player profiles. Let's have a look how we might input that data. Now, if we go to our report section, we'll see that the Death Star automatically populates certain types of player profiles with a range research report. So we see our first player profile here is the pink tag. So let's check out the pink tag report. And let's go to the result. Now the report's already pre-compiled. It's just loading that pre-compiled report. And let's have a look at the fold to CBET OP. This is going to help us understand how we should be playing against different player profiles. And we'll find that in some areas of the game, different profiles play very similarly. In other areas of the game, they play quite differently. That's what this type of analysis is going to allow us to figure out. Once again, without thinking too much, we can just run down this list of stats because we know now that they correlate directly to the Excel sheet. So let's compare the data for the pink tag, 43, that's the same, 43 for the turn, so slightly less of 48 for the river. So if you thought that pink tags were always huge cooling stations and didn't fall anywhere near as often as the general population, well, that would be wrong in this case. You can see that these types of player profile do fold slightly less, but they don't fold significantly less than the average tendencies of the population. Of course, there could be some individual opponents who are exceptions. But as we can see, someone could be terrible, but still fold at a reasonable frequency on each treat when facing continuation bets. Versus delayed, see the same kind of thing, falling slightly less in the player pool, but not a huge amount. We see in this case, the pink tags actually falling even more to river follow-ups. So what's happening here is that they're folding less against the delayed C bet, reaching the river with a wider range, but then falling that range on the river. So we have a higher falling frequency versus the follow-up bet. Versus stop and go, 54. And versus river one bet, 66. So we can see slightly less than the population on average, but only by a few percent. Now let's check out one more report and that's gonna be the red tag because the first column here is just population averages. What happens if we specifically look at the taggier players in the player pool? Fold to CBET OOP. Let's start entering the data here for the red tag. So we have 46, 46, 53, 62. So we can see red tags fold significantly more often against delayed CBETs. Maybe we should even have a third color for above 60. That is a significant amount of automatic profit. And we should be attacking this scenario relentlessly 
when playing against a red tag profile. Let's see how that affects the fold versus follow up. Notice how the fold to follow up is lower than the other player profiles. So we can see the red tag is folding the turn significantly more often, but if they do defend the turn, they're less likely to fold the river. Having said that, that's not to say we shouldn't bluff the river quite aggressively. It's not in the vivid green category, but it's well above 45%, and this is still a great automatic profit spot for us. If we have a trash hand, the data is suggesting we should fire that second barrel on the river as a bluff. Finally, we have fold to stop and go, 54%. That's also significant auto profit. And fold to river one bet. We don't really see this part of the game tree too much, but if we do ever get there, this is a hugely profitable bluff spot for us in the long run. As you can see, completing the entire sheet for your player pool is going to take a decent amount of time, but it's going to be well worth it. You're going to have a really strong idea of how the average player in your pool is playing. And you're going to be able to use that data to generate some very strong exploitative default strategies. If you like the tools you saw in this video, remember you can get the sheet from www.pokerweasel.com and you can get the Death Star population analysis tools package from www.pokerdeathstar.xyz. Thanks very much for watching guys.